May I speak in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Well, I think I should be thankful that I haven't had as much trouble as Moses has had. But then I've only had you for six years, not 40. So this morning, I guess it's less of a preach and more of a speech as I come to my last Sunday in these parishes. I started here at St Mark, if you remember, so it seems fitting that I end here too. Of course, one ending is just another beginning for me and for you. Whoever is not against us is for us, says Jesus in our gospel reading this morning. And looking out over the congregation and over all those we've met in the last six years, I see and recognize many friends. Some of you regular here, some not. But I think it shows that our churches do make an impact in our wider community. And although sometimes it can feel like we are very alone in a country that is slowly losing its Christian identity, we do have many friends. I was asked, what would my legacy be? Well, I guess everyone will have a different opinion. In the last six years, there have been some difficult decisions to make. And of course, change is not always welcomed. But change is inevitable. And I guess it would depend on your perspective as to whether this is a good thing or not. But the legacy thing troubles me somewhat. As on the one hand, I hope that I have made a difference to some of you. But on the other hand, a vicar's vicar's job is not about the personality, the person I am, but it's about God's calling in such a time as this, and therefore the calling of all of us under God to do his work in this place, guided perhaps by the person you choose to be your leader. The next person to come will also be following God's call for these places in this new time. So let's talk about a vicar's job. What is it? I think we can get very bogged down still in thinking that a vicar is here just for us, the people of the church. An old fashioned view of the pastoral vicar that had time to visit every one of his, and it would have been his in those days, flock to have tea from the best china and listen to everyone's daily woes. Or, as the usual comment, you only work on Sundays. I'd love a job where you only work one day a week. And yes, I have had that said to me. Wouldn't it be lovely? But the vicar who is incumbent here in this benefice has 10,000 souls to look after. The cure of souls which is given as a charge by the bishop on induction to these parishes. So whilst leading worship on a Sunday morning is the top job of a vicar, the rest of the time is also rather busy and very often not seen. I think perhaps the distinction between a priest and a vicar is a difficult one to understand. My priestly role I have the honour of presiding at the Eucharist, something only the ordained can do. In the daily offices, I pray for all of you and all of our communities. In my own prayer time, I pray for guidance and strength. The priest is contemplative, the vicar is active. It is a difficult combination to perform. As vicar and priest, it has been my privilege over the years to have sat and prayed at the deathbed of many, at home or in hospital, to prayerfully support the grieving families and keep in touch with them for as long as needed, to support families through court appearances, through meetings with doctors, solicitors, the home office, the job centre, to rehome the homeless, to sit on child protection boards, 
to work with social services, to sit by the bedside of the suicidal when thankfully they haven't managed to succeed, to support them and their families, working with the crisis or mental health teams. It has been my privilege to prepare and marry many couples, but also to counsel through divorce, to baptise many babies and sadly to bury a few. None of these families or these people will you ever see in church on a Sunday. They will not contribute in any way to the life of the church. But they are all valued and precious children of God, loved by him as all of you are. I'm not telling you this as a catalogue of what I have done or to justify why I have not always been available but because your next vicar will be doing all of this too, and most of it unseen, and all of it is held inside. We vicars are human. We hurt with the pain of others too. Be kind and loving to your new vicar. They will be giving 100% of themselves 100% of the time. You just may not see it all. But I don't want to end on a note like that, because ministry is a joy. And most of the time, these parishes have been a joy, with so many very committed and lovely people. We do have something very special here. We have community. It is a struggle in today's secular world to exist. It's expensive to keep old buildings going, to pay the parish share, but we do it with joy and thanks. We do it with cream teas and summer fates, with children's crafts and adults' crafts, with churchyard trails, Christmas crib services, carol services, mulled wine and mince pies. We do it with lunch clubs, computer clubs, coffee mornings. We do it with our communities. And this is what church is all about. Sunday morning worship is all about giving thanks for all that we receive, the so many blessings we have, and about equipping ourselves to go out into the world. That's why the font is at the, the entrance to the church or to the exit, to remind us to take our baptismal promises out with us, and then come back the following week to thank God for all that we have done in his name, and to give us strength to go back in the world and do his work again, against all the odds. Church has never been about what we receive or what we can get, but what about all about what we can give? If there is to be any legacy, I hope and pray that that is it, that our churches are a blessing to our communities, not just for ourselves. In these parishes, we are blessed with three PCCs, all with wonderful and committed people. There are five amazing church wardens, and I'm so grateful for all of those who have served as wardens in my time here. They will be helping you guide you through the interregnum. We have a very excellent ministry team, all of whom who have been just brilliant through the pandemic. I'm sure you agree. Please support them with your prayers and in practical ways. They may be fantastic, but they are few. Help them where you can, get involved, share the burden. And in particular, please support Sally, who in her dual role as LLM and administrator will be picking up all the extra paperwork as well. I didn't mention the paperwork, there is so much. The pandemic has brought many changes and challenges and we are still in recovery mode and we will be for some time, but we will recover and we will once again be a joyful, vibrant, worshipping community, but perhaps not exactly how we were before. Look upon this time as an opportunity to prune and regrow 
into something much more magnificent than was here before. Hold one another in prayer, support one another, and support these churches. I have always been amazed at God's resilience when faced with me. His love never wavers, despite all that I do wrong or mess up. I'm not sure how I would cope with all that life throws if I didn't have God at my back. Every move, every decision is upheld and guided by God. And therefore I can rest knowing that the next steps here and for me are in his hands. I only have to follow. I don't need to stress or worry. This is the God that James spoke about in our reading this morning. Are you suffering? Are you sick? Are you in crisis? Do you have a decision to make? Have you lost direction? Hand it over to God. Give all your cares to him and he will uphold you. He will give you that promised rest. Try it. It's life changing. Are you happy? Joyful? Content? Then give your thanks to God for you are truly blessed. But don't sit for long in your contentedness. Share it. You are not given these things for you alone. Yes, enjoy them, but share them. Not just with your loved ones. Don't forget to share them with the unlovable too, the marginalized, the poor, the refugee. That is the kingdom of God, where everyone is valued, where everyone is loved. Love God with your whole heart, your whole mind, and all your soul. Love your neighbour as yourself. This is our legacy, not mine. I will watch from the sidelines. I will keep you and your new vicar in my prayers. And I am so very sure that I will see amazing things happen. Everything here is ripe for growth. You can do it. Thank you all for the last six years. Thank you for your friendship and your support. It has been a privilege and a joy, and I will miss you. Amen. The peace of the Lord Christ go with you, wherever he may send you. May he guide you through the wilderness, protect you through the storm. May he bring you home rejoicing at the wonders he has shown you. May he bring you home rejoicing once again into our doors. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be with you and remain with you always. Amen. Amen. Let us go in peace to love and serve the Lord. So we're here, obviously we're all here today to be joined as the body of Christ, but there is another reason for being here. Um, we have to say farewell to Victoria and Andrew. Um, they are taking the next step of their journey. Yeah, come on, come on, Andrew, come on. I know you haven't necessarily been here for the whole six years, <laughs> but, um, but quite, quite a bit of it. Um, they're taking the next steps of their journey and we will take the next steps of ours. Journeys like this aren't always easy. I mean, our reading this morning had Moses. Moses didn't go easily uh, when he was called at the burning bush and, and subsequently, and we heard in the reading this morning some of the struggles he had. Um, although I was struck by the last verse of, will you come and follow me? Lord, your summons echoes true when you but call my name. Let me turn and follow you and never be the same. In your company I'll go where your love and footsteps show. Thus I'll move and live and grow in you and you in me. So we've got a few things for you to take <laughs> with you. Holding something very heavy. Absolutely. Well, yes. So, well, so first, so Darrell, first of all, there's a card. We have a card, a card from all the churches. Um, and 
And we have some other um, wishes I've forwarded on to you electronically in, in due course, but we have a card. For you. Um, we had a collection, and we've turned some of that collection into a uh, hydrangea. Very nice, Helen, thank you. Which I'm, I'm assured is hard to kill. <laughs> Excellent, good, very good. So, what are you saying? <laughs> nothing, nothing, nothing at all. Would you like to? That's very lovely. lovely. That's lovely. Oh, you're holding a very heavy thing. Thank you. Thank you. That's very lovely. I'm going to pop it down. Please, it is. And Scylla, a planter with another splash of colour. That's going to be lovely on our new patio. Yes, indeed. Absolutely. Wonderful. Thank you. Um, And we didn't just collect enough for the two plants, so there's a check. Oh, in here. Oh, the check's in there, is it? It's in there. There's a check <laughs> with the remaining money. Um, so you go, you go with all our wishes and those gifts and obviously our prayers. Thank you. Um, so I couldn't work out how to finish. I will just say, may the road rise up to meet you. May the wind be always at your back. May the sun shine warm upon your face. The rains fall soft upon your field. And until such time as we might meet again, May God hold you, Victoria, you, Andrew, and all of us in the palm of his hand. Amen. Thank you, Mark. That's perfect. Mm. Thank, Thank you. you. Bless you. Thank you, everybody.